So in addition to the 3D printers and laser cutters that we have here at the Makerspace, we've also got these really cool soldering stations. They've got a soldering iron, a tip cleaner, they've got helping hands, you know, for helping, and some of them even have little fans with filters on them to help keep the air clean. But before you just jump in and start using this equipment, we have to talk safety. Soldering is the process of melting a low temperature metal and bonding that to another metal. Now, we use it mostly for electronics projects here in the makerspace, and doing soldering well is as much of an art as anything. We can't exactly tell you what temperatures are right, you just kinda gotta feel it. Now, the big enemy to soldering are called oxides. Oxides is simply oxygen bonding to metal, and when it happens in large amounts in other places, we call it rust. But even just a little bit of oxygen bonding to the metal can prevent the solder from wicking properly, melting into small places, and it can prevent the metals from making a good bond. So we have to do as much as we can to get rid of those oxides. One thing that will get rid of it is making sure that the sponge in your soldering station is wet. Then, when the soldering iron is hot, you touch it to the sponge, and you'll hear it hiss just a little bit when you do that. What that does is it causes the oxides on the outside of the, the tip to quickly contract and fall off. We call this shocking the oxides off of there. Another tool that we use to fight the oxides is called flux. Now, in the past and in some other situations, flux is a material that you can paint onto the surface before you start soldering. But here at the Makerspace, we use an all-in-one rosin core solder. Down the middle of this solder, and it's hard to see it, but there is a very small uh, core of rosin uh, or flux that as you are melting the metal, it also is melting and spreading over your surface, cleaning those oxides off and allowing for a good, clean surface. Now, there are a couple of safety concerns, of course, with doing soldering. The first one, and perhaps most obvious, is that this tip will get very hot. That's the point of it, and so if you touch it, you might get hurt. But the other one is that we are working with molten metal. And molten metal will flow and move and will just curl around your skin as it transfers its energy getting back to coolness and will hurt you really bad. The other thing is we are melting metal and rosin and so we are cr creating fumes that might be a little bit unpleasant. But then also solder, this solder has lead in it and lead has been shown to be dangerous especially to young people. So for your safety, we have a couple of safety rules and they're up on the wall if you ever need to refer to them. The first one is we want you to protect your eyes. So in the drawer opposite the 3D printer, you're going to find some safety equipment including glasses or goggles that you can wear and we want you to wear these while you're doing soldering. Next, because lead is heavy and will settle on surfaces, we want to provide it with as few surfaces to settle on and just leave the table so that we can wash it. So make sure you close the computer before you start any soldering projects and clear the space of any junk that's around. And then when you're done, make sure to clean off the surface with a rag or, or a, a brush to make sure that it's as clean as possible and free from that lead that could hurt people. Also, no flammables near the soldering station. Make sure we get those put away, especially before you start, but just in general, don't store them there. And then, if you have one, one of these filtering fans, just turn it on and the fan will start drawing air through it and pulling those fumes away and could help clear the air. Now, we've also got some general good ideas when it comes to doing soldering that you might want to keep in mind. Number one, never solder something when it's live. If it's plugged in or powered by a battery, do not start putting your electrical leads to it. That's just a bad idea. Also, when this iron is not in your hand, you will make sure it's in the holder. You're not just going to set it on the table and wait for it to roll off. And if you do fumble the iron and start to drop it, well, just let it fall and get your body and hands and feet out of the way. 
It's much easier to fix and replace a broken tip on a soldering iron than to recover from a burn or burnt clothing from it touching your skin and clothing. Lastly, remember that when you're done soldering, you've just put a lot of heat onto metal and hot metal looks just like cold metal. So give it a minute or two before you touch it for your own safety. So now that we've talked a little bit about what soldering is, let's go through an example of doing soldering. You guys are going to work on these little Atom badges as your badge for using the soldering stations in the maker space. And I'm gonna help you get started on that project before you jump in. But remember that there are also instructions for you to follow, so follow those closely. Let's take a look at this project right now. To begin with, the kit comes with four LEDs, a battery, a switch, a case for the battery, two magnets, and of course, the board that we're going to be circuiting on. Keep in mind that these, this is two magnets and that they want to stick together whenever they can. Ha, there they go. Now, these four LEDs may look the same, but one of them is ever so slightly different. It's slightly larger and thicker than the other ones and it also has much larger flanges on the side so compare them carefully to figure out which one's the bigger one that's it and that one is going to go into the center of your circuit board now what you probably want to do first of all notice how leds have one lead that's short one lead that's longer and the instructions for them have one side that's kind of cut off a little bit it's a useful way of illustrating that that's the one where the shorter one goes so feed it through with the shorter one on that side now because this one has the larger flanges it might not go all the way through but the other one should be able to go all the way through but to hold it in place bend the leads just a little bit so that they hold from falling while you do your soldering now turn on the soldering iron and allow it to come to heat. Once the soldering iron is hot and we want to make sure that this gets as hot as possible, you'll know it well because when you touch it to the sponge, it will hiss. Okay. There it is, it is hissing good as those oxides are falling away. Now we wanna take just a little bit of solder and touch it to the tip of the soldering iron to put just a little bit of solder on the tip. We call that tinning the soldering iron. Then with the component in place, you put the soldering iron tip near where you want the part, or where you want to do the soldering, and then you touch it with just a little bit of solder. That creates a strong connection so that lots of heat is flowing, and then you can use the soldering or solder and just put it on there. Feel free to put tons of solder on there, hopefully that will flow down through. I say tons, I don't mean tons of it, obviously. Now a good soldering job will look kind of like a Hershey's Kiss. It won't be sucked in. It'll kind of be bulging out just a little bit, but not too much. Let's try it again on this other side. A Little bit of solder to make the connection stronger. Then add some more solder to hopefully wick down in there. And then a little bit of a Hershey's Kiss on there. Perfect, I think I did this side better than that side. And that's okay, you might make some mistakes as you're going. Now, from now on, it's just follow the instructions. And if you find that you're getting an excess of solder on the tip there, go ahead and just use the tip cleaner to get it off of there. And then, of course, whenever you're done with the soldering iron while you're playing with the components, make sure you put it back in its holster while you're waiting. And that's it. The rest of it is just follow the instructions on the paper. The switch goes on the bottom, the battery case goes on this side, and I like to have my switch facing down, but it doesn't really matter which way you do it. And if you do it properly, all the LEDs on the other side should light up when you're done and blink. And it's a lot of fun. So I encourage you to go ahead and do that. So that's it. You know everything that you need to know to get started, but you still have to get into the maker space. Make sure to fill out the quiz, sign the waiver if you haven't already, and then go ahead and do this project so that you can come in and use our soldering irons for your own projects whenever you want. I'll see you at the Makerspace.
Now, 